what's Leonardo DiCaprio really like? <laughs> and um, I'm actually in a position to, t to tell you. Um, we spent a lot of uh, quality time together to the extent you, you can do that with a Hollywood movie star. Uh, he was solicitous of, of me as an author in a way I never expected. Uh, I, I don't think I've mentioned this to this group, but as they were beginning filming uh, last uh, September in Washington, uh, DiCaprio came to my house uh, to talk. You know, I was very curious what he'd want. Uh, I felt extremely guilty that my three daughters were all away, um, <laughs> uh, infuriating them. But he, he came to the house, and uh, my wife, he, you know, got him a sandwich. Very nice sandwich, which he ate all of. And uh, he said, his first question was asking about Roger Ferris, the hero of the book that he plays. How does Ferris walk? And I have to be honest, you know, that's the one thing that I had never considered uh, as a writer. I mean, you know, you know, in in print, characters, you know, he moved across the room. That's about all you say. Um, and and and. DiCaprio showed me, you know, how he thought this character walked. He realized to, to, to portray somebody on the screen, it, you know, it's all the little visual cues that you wouldn't consciously be aware of, but that establish who this person is in, you know, in space, how he moves through space. So he showed me, and it was a kind of, he's a big guy, bigger than you think. He's kind of walking like this. And, and, I, and I watched him walk across my living room, and I said, uh, actually, I don't think he walked like that. <laughs> um, he, you know, if he's in the Arab world, people in the Arab world are a little, little more uptight. You know, they, they're kind of more on the balls of their feet, and they're a little warier. You know, looking around, they're, they're, they're tense. It's, it's not, a, it's not a loose, laid-back kind of place. And you know, he instantly said, "Oh, yeah, okay." So then he, you know, does, does a new walk. Um, and if you, see, if you see the movie, he's sort of in between the two. I have to be honest. He didn't completely follow David's advice, but. Um, he was, he was, he was really uh, nice. Just to say one final thing about, about, about this project, uh, Warner Brothers, which produced the movie, was really very courageous in, in, in doing this. You know, the, the sort of standard line on this, on this movie, um, you know, it was beaten at the box office by Beverly Hills Chihuahua. <laughs> you know, it's painful to say that, but it's, it's a fact. And I, I think that, you know, that this reinforced the feeling in Hollywood that, there's some subjects that are just too tough and too raw. Uh, a lot of critics, you know, the New Yorker, uh, most uh, notably, loved the movie. But um, you know, it, it, people, it, it was it was tough for for, for people to turn out. That people wanted to go, you know, the economy falling apart. They wanted to go see the talking chihuahua. So, um, you know, I really love uh, Warner Brothers for. Uh, making the movie for Ridley Scott, the director, for making the movie, even knowing that you know it was going to be sailing into a headwind. It's just nice when people believe in stuff that's serious and want to make a difference, want to tell stories that matter.